Glory to God, I want to soak you with the Bible. All we deal with here is scriptures. That's it. That's it. We don't deal with your feelings, no. your personal views. No. Only thing we're interested in, what God thinks, how God feels, what did God say. If you don't like it, that's your problem. That's right. Do you hear what it says? Be not deceived. Don't be tricked. God is not mocked. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, whatever a man dish out, that shall he also reap. So all this mockery and disrespect that the human family is doing to God, he's going to pay you back. He's just letting you go on. That's right. But he's going to get you back. That's right. We're talking about God. Amen. You that say there is no God. The sun still rises and the sun still sets. The fool that said in his heart. The fool, do you hear? In Psalms 53 and at verse 1. Psalms 53 and 1 says. The fool had said in his heart. There is no God. Corrupt are they. What? Corrupt are they. Righteous are they. Corrupt are they. A few years ago, I think I was in Europe. And there was a church that opened up in Europe. And uh, it's called the Church of Atheists. They bought an abandoned Catholic church. And it was packed. And the head devil, the minister, Amen. he said, it is so beautiful to be able to come together with so many unbelievers. He said, doesn't it make you feel good to know there's no power over you? That's something to say. That's what you think. My Lord. God that made the heavens. You said there is no God, but yet you got this massive sun. Yeah. And rain come and bring fruit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He can afflict pain at will. That's right. God said, I kill. Yeah. I make alive. Yeah. I woo. I heal. So you saying that God don't exist, it doesn't stop him from being God. That's right. You're just another little fool on the earth. That's right. You wealthy rich celebrities. The last one you meet is the God that you made fun of. The God that you made mockery of. The God that you blasphemed against. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when you die, Mr. and Mrs. Entertainer and Mr. and Mrs. Celebrity, they can roll you in the church all you want. All they want, a preacher can try to put you in heaven much as he please. But your Lord know you made mockery of him. You tried to belittle him. You called him a liar. That's right. You said he did not exist. That's right. You said that God was nothing but a white European. But when the judge come and snatch your soul out of your body and your spirit stand in the presence of God, the fear that your body never had, your spirit shall have. Bible says dust go back to dust 
and the spirit go back to God. How can a so-called Christian, never mind a so-called Christian, how can anyone with morals, ethics, decency, listen to the rat trash? The rappers call the female a bee, a female dog, because that's what he think of her. whose mouth is full of cursing in the book of Romans chapter 3 and at verse 14. Listen. Romans 3 and at verse 14. What did it say? Whose mouth is full of cursing. Whose mouth is full of cussing. And bitterness. Bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed they blood. They hate the Bible. Yeah. Brother, the entertainment community hate the scriptures and then some try to pretend like they don't hate it by calling themselves Christian. Christian. Have you noticed now anything and anyone they call themselves Christians? You will have a gay parade. That's right. And over 85% of the homosexuals will say we're Christians. Ask yourself, viewers, why T.D. Jakes don't say nothing about homosexuality, same-sex marriages, Men with men, women with women, think. Why don't he say nothing? He's busy flapping his hands around. Why don't he say nothing? Either you are against it or you condone it. If you are against wrong, you will speak out against the wrong. I forgot the gentleman's name. A journalist gave an interview to Jake's. No, not Pierce Morgan. And he asked Jake's a question. Can homosexuality, in fact, the interview is on YouTube. Can homosexuality and the church coexist? Jake's didn't stutter. He said, why, well, certainly. Then Jake said, there's many ways, there's a whole lot of ways to get to God. Use a liar. There's one way to get to God. The Bible says a highway shall be there. And a way. And that way shall be called the way of holiness. These men, they hate the Bible. So this is why you see the potter house, but God is going to crack that pottery. Many ways to get to God. The Bible don't teach that foolishness. Jesus saith unto him. Listen at this. Now in the book of St. John chapter 14 and at verse 6. Let's compare what Jake said to what Jesus said. Give chapter and verse again. St. John chapter 14 and at verse 6. John 14, 26 said. St. John 14 and verse 6. All right, John 14 and verse 6. All right. Jesus saith unto him. Jesus says unto him, I am the way. No, I have many ways. I am the way. Spell way. W-A-Y. S. W-A-Y. Where's the S? No S. W-A-Y. T.D. Jakes is nothing but an evangelistic liar. That's right. Did you hear the old troublemaker? That's right. He's nothing but an evangelistic liar. That's right. He tell you what you want to hear. Amen. We come tell you what you don't want to hear, right. but what you got to hear. Amen. What he said? Jesus saith unto him. Jesus said to him. I am the way. I am the way. The truth. The truth. Jesus is what? The truth. 
<laughs> Amen. Jesus is what? The truth. So if Jesus Hallelujah. is the truth, truth, then tell us the truth. That's right. Hallelujah. You can't tell us the truth. You don't believe in Jesus. That's right. I am the way, the, the truth, the truth, and the life. At what? And the life. Amen. Jesus' life contradicts ours. That's right. His life is the standard of how we should live. That's right. His life is the standard of how we hope to be and should be That's and it. are trying to be. That's right. That's A right. whole lot of ways. Mm. These men lie with no conscience at all. They are waxing fat. Listen. Now in the book of Jeremiah chapter 5 and at verse 28. Listen to what the Bible says about these greedy false prophets. They are waxing fat. They wait, wait, wait. Fat. They what? They are waxing fat. I want you Jake's followers to listen at this. They are waxing fat. fat. They are waxing fat. Fat. And what happened to them? They shine. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 They shine. Yea, they overpass. They overlook the deeds of the wicked. The preachers don't preach against the sins of the world today. No. Because they know if I preach against sin, it will make me unpopular. That's right. That's right. Wherein if you're in this sincerely for God, you're not about popularity. Popularity is vain. That's right. That's vanity. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Go back to the book of Joshua, if you will. Back in Joshua. Everybody all right? Amen. Come on, son. Back in Joshua 24 and verse 14. Yes. Now, therefore, fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. I, I, I want to encourage fear. all my fear. brothers and sisters that are here and that are watching around the world. Amen. Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. Respect them. That's right. If your wife leave you because you believe God, fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. If your husband refused to take care of you and your children because of your fear for God, fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. And God will not forsake the righteous. That's right. What did he say? Now therefore, fear the Lord. Now therefore, you that sin these churches, Amen. fear the Lord. Fear, fear the, Lord. the Lord enough. That you leave them. That's right. These false churches. That's right. Fear the Lord enough that you leave these unscriptural man made religions. Amen. Amen. Well, I was coming to church this morning. I was fishing through the radio to see what I can listen to. And, and I just left it where it was. And, and here was a man telling the people, you that are listening now, repeat after me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I'm not a man that rolled his eyes, but I was in my car. Go ahead, God. People today, some of them know certain things in the Bible, but they are afraid how it would make others feel if they live by what they know. That's right. They are more concerned how their father going to act, their mother going to act, their sons and daughters going to act, their brothers and sisters, the people on the job. You're more concerned how people going to react towards you, how many friends you're going to lose, more than you are how God going to react towards you. That's right. Now, when you fear the Lord, your priorities are in order. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Yes. When you fear God, you take a stand, and your stand will be challenged. Yes. To all of my teachers that teach in the schools, when your school try to urge you to teach a homosexual curriculum, teach it. And teach it right. Don't 
tell them you won't teach it. Right. Teach it. But teach it right. right. And if your principal or the school superintendent come and said we gave a homosexual curriculum and we noticed that you are telling the boys you can't marry your own kind and the girls, that's not our curriculum. Tell them I brought them the curriculum of their creator. That's right. That's right. Now, if they threaten your job, you must fear God enough where you will not flinch, you will not compromise, and you will not tell them, uh, I think about it. I ain't got to think about nothing. You know, at one time, when I was younger, I thought about being a school teacher. I end up being a teacher anyway. But if I was in the school, with this knowledge now, I would challenge the school superintendent. You see, brothers and sisters, you should never buckle when holiness is challenged in your lifestyle. Don't you know what the word of God says about holiness? It is an invincible shield. You see, you so-called Christians, you will do anything and say anything to keep that job and to salvage your check. But a true child of God, don't you hear Ruth and Naomi? Don't you hear Esther? If I die, let me die. You don't find that type of thinking today among God's people. Look at what Balak offered Balaam. Silver, gold, position. Balaam said, if you fill this house with silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord to do more or less. What happened to that old-fashioned godly mind? Give me the book of Mark. I want to show you what happened to that mind. That mind was choked out of God's people. And what choked the mind of God out of the people was the lust for other things. That's right. It entered in that's right. and it affected the word that's in us. In the book of St. Mark chapter 4. And we'll start at verse 18. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Mark, Give chapter and verse again. St. Mark chapter 4 and at the 18th verse. All right, Mark 4, 18. And these are they which are sown among thorns, yeah. such as hear the word. They hear it. And the cares of this world. Do you hear this? Amen. The cares, the concerns of this world. And the deceitfulness, and the deceitfulness of, riches, of what? Of riches. It's not a sin to be rich. Sin is when riches possess you. That's right. That's right. It was God that made Solomon rich. That's right. But most rich people don't want God. No. Are you listening? That's right. Because in their mind, what need do they have for God when they got all this money? Right. 
So to pretend they have some form of spiritualism, they may go to church on Easter. That's right. Or go on Christmas. Or go on some holiday. And for some strange reason, these wealthy bourgeoisie fellas think they done God a favor. That's right. Listen, Mr. Rich Man and Rich Woman. You can't extend life. There's nothing in your bank account that extends life. There's nothing in your safe deposit box that's going to extend life. They that trust in their wealth. Listen. In the book of Psalms 49 and at verse 6. They that trust in their wealth. In their wealth. And boast themselves. And boast themselves. In the multitude of their riches. In the multitude of their riches. None of them can by any means redeem his brother. None can redeem his brother. Nor give to God a ransom for him. Nor give to God a ransom for him. For the redemption of their soul is precious. And it ceaseth forever. When your buddy, your friend die, your money can't bring them back. That's right. Look at the many millions of rich people that's dead already. That's right. Now let's get back to the church folk yeah. in the book of Mark. Listen. Back in Mark chapter 4 and at verse 19. I want you to pay close attention to this. I want to take my time and soak you. Mark chapter 4 and at verse 19. All right. And the cares of this world. The cares of this world. And the deceitfulness of riches. The deceitfulness of riches. And the lust. The lust. Of other things. Of other things. It, when, all, when the cares of this world come in your life, the trickery of riches mm -hmm. and the lust. Of the other reason things. why it says the deceitfulness of riches, because the word of God says the love of money is the root of all evil. When you love money more than God, you will pursue that money even if you got to break God's commandment. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. When you love God more than money, you will turn down any amount just to stay on good terms with God. The love of money. It love didn't it. say to have money is the root. It says love. to love it. Love it. Love it. My brother Tony Harvin, I was talking about these false prophets, how there's a video when they got money all over the pulpit and Creflo Old Dollar and some other false prophet is running across the pulpit talking about we're going to anoint the money. Anoint the money. I mean, they're running through the money, kicking it. Anoint the money, anoint the money, sliding all through it. My Lord, my Lord. And people jumping out of their chairs, throwing more money. This clownage. Church have became lower than a dog's house. Amen. And people of God love it. I oh, say, wait a minute, Pastor Jennings. Don't you mean them that say they are of God? Give me Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. I believe chapter 5. Chapter 5. And verse 30. Jeremiah. And then go back to Mark. Jeremiah chapter 5 and at verse 30. All right. And when that, Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 30. All right. A wonderful and horrible a thing. A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land is committed in the land the prophets prophesy falsely the preachers prophesy falsely the and the messengers prophesy falsely and, and the priests bear rule by their means what do you mean bear rule by their means the preachers made themselves preachers right. they couldn't get a job so they lied and said they got a calling and they went up in the pulpit and now the people pay them that's right huh Right. He couldn't find work or he got laid off and he couldn't find nothing else to do. So he said, oh, I think I would be a reverend. Amen. So he got on in the pulpit. Now he got all your money. Live better than you do. Listen. The prophets prophesy falsely. The prophet prophesy falsely. And the priests bear rule by their means. 
and tell us how the people feel about a man prophesying lies, because that's falsely, yeah, that's right. and a self-made preacher, not a God-made preacher, a self-made preacher. How does the Bible say that people feel? And my people. God talking. And my people. God said my people. Love to have it so. Amen. Amen. They hit. And my people. Love to have it so. They love to see the scams. That's right. They love the churches where celebrities come to and make them feel important. What a celebrity got over Jesus. Give me the church that Jesus is in. You can have your celebrities. If God is not there, that church is dead. How do the people feel? And my people love to have it so. Love. You love to love. have the church where you can play the lottery. That's right. You love to have the church where you can go on the prom and get pregnant and then get on your choir. That's right. You love to have the church where your preacher don't have a first lady, he got the first man. You love the churches where the pastor acts more feminine than his wife. That's right. That's right. God says, my people. My people love to have it so. Something is wrong with God's people. Love it. Love it. And here's God in his mercy giving you time. And these men are preaching like they got a lot of time. Why are we preaching so hard? Because I understand that the end is nigh. And being that the end is close, you can't play with the book. You can't play church. The preachers got you under this illusion. You got a lot of time. No, you don't. The day of the Lord will come. In the days of Noah, the Lord gave them back then 120 years to get right. And not in 120 years did they get right. You know, the apostolics and other churches taught that when the Bible says the number of man shall be 120 years, they said that's when God lengthened man life expand. No, that's how long God gave Noah a period to preach. That's right. And the preacher said Noah was the only one preaching. Give me Genesis, then we'll get Joshua. First in the book of Genesis chapter 6. I want to show you how many men was preaching in Noah's day and what 120 years represent. That's right. Then we'll go back to the book of Mark. Amen. Listen. First in Genesis chapter 6, we'll start at verse 1. Give chapter and verse again. Genesis chapter 6, and we're at the first verse. What is it? And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth. What happened? And daughters were born unto them. Yes. But the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. Yes. And they took them wives of all which they chose. All right. And the Lord said. And the Lord said. My spirit shall not always strive with man. All right, here. Viewers, remember he said as it was in Noah's day, so shall it be when the Son of Man come. Right. He told you, I'm not always going to strive with you. I'm not always going to be patient with you. I'm not always going to tolerate you. I'm not always going to give you a lot of time. For that he also is flesh. I'm not always going to strive with man saying he you nothing but flesh. Uh -huh. Yet his days. Yet his days. Shall be in 120 years. Now, Genesis didn't give you the detail of the 120 years. No. Genesis didn't tell us what went on those 120 years. That's right. Give me the book of Joshua. Now, in the book of Joshua, chapter 5. And we'll start at verse 8. Parliament. For thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Behold. Look. I give you a period of 120 years. I give you a years. period. 
of 120 years. If ye turn to me, if you turn to me, and forsake your evil ways, and stop your evil doing, then will I also turn away from the evil. Then I will also turn away from the evil which I told you. The 120 years was a time that God gave man to repent and get right. And if man would have done it, there would not be no flood. That's right. That's right. Man could have humbled himself. That's right. And no flood. No flood. And the Lord granted them a period. The Lord granted them a period. A period. Of 120 of one years. 120 years. Saying if they will return. Saying if they will do what? If they will return. Wait a minute. For God to say return, that means they left him. That's right. God is saying the same thing now. That's right. Come on back. Come on back to God. You know better. Go ahead. You know you ain't got no business marrying a man. Come back to God. Hallelujah. You know better than to be out here half naked. Come back to God. You preachers, you know you are using the people for money. Come back to God. The Holy Book says what? If they will return. If they will return. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If they will return. Then will God repent of the evil. God will repent of the evil. So as to not to destroy the earth. So as not to destroy the earth. Now in the book of Joshua chapter 5. What is it? Now in verse 9. What is it? And Noah. And Noah. Who else? And Methuselah. No, just Noah. And Noah and Methuselah. Noah and the oldest man that lived. That's right. Noah and, and Methuselah, Methuselah spoke all the words of the Lord. They spoke all the words of the Lord to the sons of men. To the sons of men. Day after day. Day after day. Constantly. How often? Constantly. How often? Constantly. That's what we got to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You brothers and minister, Hallelujah. you got to do it constantly. Hallelujah. Paul said, moreover, brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Constantly. You got to be consistent. That's right. Hallelujah. Day you wealthy day. preachers. There is no such thing as a preacher retiring. The Bible says, be thou faithful unto death. Hallelujah. They got to die in it. Ain't no retirement. Bless the name of God. What did he say? And Noah and Methuselah. Noah and Methuselah spoke all the words spoke of the Lord. Spoke all the words of the Lord. Of the Lord. To the sons of men. To the sons of men. Day after day. Day after day. Constantly. Constantly. Speaking to them. Speaking to them. But. But. The sons of men would not hearken to them. That's the way folks are now. Here they are. As they were in the days of Noah, That's right. so shall it be when the Son of Man come. Right. Go back to the book of Mark and let's see what have interfered with the people of God. Back in Mark chapter 4 and at verse 19. Follow me. And the cares of this world. Cares of this world. And the deceitfulness of riches. You see, the love of money have crept into the church so much. <laughs> These preachers are willing to say anything. They're willing to do anything. Yeah. Any type of scheme, trace your hand on paper and send it to them, or put your hand on the television, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you and him are partners. Amen. Peter pop off toilet water that he called miracle water. I remember when I first commented about it, Peter pop off sent me a personal letter. He said, I dare you. Talking about my water is toilet water. Many miracles. Bring me your water. I'll make you lick it up. Amen. These men are hustlers. They are nothing but schemers. 
Oh, yeah. Glory to God, but we're going to break it up as long as we live. Amen. What did the Bible say? And the cares of this world. The cares of this world. And the deceitfulness the of riches. The deceitfulness of wealth. And the lust of other things. And the lust, the longing, the craving for other things. Entering, how does it affect? Where entering does, in. Where, where does it go? Entering in. Where does it go? Entering in. Amen. Let's see where it go. Now, let's see how does it enter in. For these things to distract me from God, it have to enter in here, mind, and it have to enter in here, heart. It enter into my mind, and I find myself constantly dwelling on it. That's right. Dwelling on it. It enter into my heart because my heart starts to begin to love and get attached to the kernel thought that I have. That's it. So now my love for money, my thought for money, I'm all about the dollar. Yeah. You can hear folks say, I'm all about the dollar. You ask them, what about God? Well, I get him, you know. <laughs> Look how cheap they talk about him. The love of money. It is the love of money that have made men turn their backs on God. Some preachers, when they had a small church, what people call storefront church, some preachers was pretty tough. I mean, solid. Humble. Fearing the Lord. Move with fear. But all of a sudden, when they started getting larger, it became less and less spiritual Less and less biblical, less and less scriptural, and more and more entertainment, and more and more ungodliness, and more and more opinion, and more and more theory, and less and less scripture. So what happened? The preacher started saying, well... I know we used to do this 30 years ago, but these are modern times now. Uh, we ain't got to do that no more. Listen how when these things get in us, what it do to the word. And the lust of other things entering in choke the word. Hold it. Choke. Come here, Carter. It does what? Choke the word. Now. <laughs> choke. If you choke a person, choke. they can't talk that good. <laughs> Is that right? Amen. Amen. I'm going to demonstrate this. Demonstrate it. <laughs> Demonstrated. I can't think of a better brother <laughs> right now than Carter. Can you raise your voice? Can you raise your voice? Huh? Can you raise your voice? I mean, you got a thick neck. Can you raise your voice? <laughs> now, a natural choke limit the supply of oxygen to brain, correct? That's right. If the supply of oxygen start to be limited towards the brain, it affects my process to think. So then, if the word of God Shoot. is being choked, Shoot. there's something, something that got a hold on you that's affecting your thought process. No longer do you think the way God wants you to think. Because just like your breast travels to hear the word travels to hear the Bible said let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus but if something I get a hold to choke. choking choke. what does it say to choke? choke the word wait a minute it chokes what? the word that's, that's something. 
my involvement, my lust, my distraction, put a stranglehold on what I've learned. That's right. Until I act so like I have no teaching. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. The word, word have been choked out of thousands. For some of my women that are watching, you have met some man and your love for him have choked the word out of you. Some of the men that are watching, you have met some woman and your lust for her have choked the word right out of you. That's right. No girlfriend should be able to text you and make you leave church to get in bed with her. No boyfriend should be able to call you and make you leave church so you can give him a booty call. Talk to me. It does what? Choke the word. Choke it. Choke the word. Hallelujah. Choke it. Choke. What brings about the choke? And the lust of other things. So you start desiring other things, wealth, money. And it chokes the word out of you that says touch not. And when it choked the word out of you that says touch not, you would ignore it. And yet, haul those cases of liquor anyway. Yeah. And you track the trailers. That's right. Because the word been choked. That's right. You see how hauling that Budweiser, you would get about twenty thousand dollars that week, and your lust for that money. Listen, how can Budweiser Amen. compete? With the only wise God. That's right. You got to be sincere about your Lord. The Hebrew brothers were sincere about the Lord until they was willing to get tossed in fire. And the Lord let them know, you're not in here alone. You're not in here alone. So your stand in God is going to be tested and you're going to be tossed in fire. God going to give the devil permission. Get him. Get her. They say they believe in me. Get them. God wanted people to be tried in the fire. You know, a blacksmith, get that iron, put it in fire, work on it, put it back in fire. That's the way God do his people. He lets you get in fire. When the blacksmith work on it, he's wanting to shape it. He got the brain shaped to it. That's the way God do us. Let us go in the fire and let the word work on us. Glory. Glory. Let the word just work on it until God shape you into what God wants you to be. The Bible says, think it not strange. Hallelujah. Concerning the fiery trial. If we are God's people, you got to be tossed in the fire. A blacksmith used fire. Give me the book of Jeremiah. It's not my word. A blacksmith used fire and a hammer. God used the same thing. God say, it's not my word. Like a hammer. And a fire. And a, like a rust on a big rocks in pieces. 
a hammer that break rocks and preach it. So a blacksmith, he'll take the iron, put it in fire. You know why he's hitting it? He got to shape it. Firm it. That, that steel cannot be shaped. A preacher is a spiritual blacksmith. Is not my you word. You folk that follow these false prophets, yeah. you know why you still sinners? Yeah. Because he don't have what it takes to shape you. God got to make a blacksmith that's not scared to use that hammer. Work on the man. Work on the woman. Work on the man. Work on the woman. Work on the man. Work on the woman. And then when you're done, God look at you and see how beautiful, how wonderful that you made. What did Jeremiah say? In Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 29. Give chapter and verse again. Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 29. Jeremiah 23, 29. Is not my word. Is not my word. Like as a fire. Like as a fire. Say if God's word is like a fire, everything in us that's not like God must be burnt up by him. That's right. Is not my word. Like as a fire. Bless the name of God. Like a fire, saith the Lord, saith the Lord, and, and like a hammer. That's why I am like I am. That's right. Yeah. Like a hammer. That break it. You out there, yeah. you don't want to get hit. Yeah. But God gave me the hammer. hammer. I got to hit you. Yeah. Do this thing That's right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Hallelujah. Yeah. All right. I got to hit like you. Glory to God. I can't help myself. That's right. Glory to God. I like just got to do it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said I can't help myself. Like a what did the Holy Ghost say? It's not my word. It's not my word. Like as a fire. Glory to God. Like a fire. Saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. And like a hammer. And it's like a hammer. That breaketh. That the, break the rock in pieces. When I see two men getting married, Amen. Got to hit you. That's right. When I see Tyler Perry ahead, and Ricky Smiley dressed like women, Hammer. one for Perry, one for Smiley. Yeah. When I see Trump, that racist President Trump, when I see him, got to hit Trump. When I see Congress. Rebel against God in America. That's right. Oh, oh, yeah. Glory. Glory to God. Oh, hey. All of America. Oh, hey. You must get hit. Go oh, ahead, brother. Glory to God. Go oh, ahead. What did he say, son? It's not my word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory it's to not God. my word. It's not my word. Like as a fire. Any time a preacher is scared to use that hammer, get out the pulpit. That's right. Get out. That's right. Get out of it. I got to use it. You may not like me, but I'm gonna use it. Why you don't like it? That's right. I got to keep swinging. Oh, yeah. If I'm asleep, yeah. I'm going to wake up swinging. Yeah. Yeah. How long? Hallelujah. You got to swing that word. That's it. Till you die. That's right. If you're in a wheelchair yeah. and they roll you to the microphone, yeah. you may be weak, yeah. may be frail. Yeah. Swing that word. Go yeah. ahead, go. Go right. Hallelujah. Go right. Hallelujah. He said, preach the word. Oh, hey. Be in season. In season. In season. Out of season. Oh, hey. Out of the God. Yeah. You got the swing. Go oh, ahead. Hey. And preach it like God has it. That's it. You preachers, if you're scared to use that hammer, hammer, get out the pulpit. 
Not the pulpit. Get out of it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not my word. What did he say? It's not my word. Glory to God. Like as a fire. It's not my word. Like as a fire. It's like fire. Saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory hallelujah. to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 It's not my word. That's fire. That's what God has. That's the way it got to be. It must 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 be. It Hallelujah. It's not my word. Hallelujah. It's not my word. Like a hammer. Glory to God that breaks the rocks in pieces. You preachers, if you are scared to use the hammer, it's time to quit. Get out the pulpit. Get out the pulpit. Hallelujah. Glory! It's not my word. That's the name of God. What did the Holy Ghost say? It's not my word. It's not my word. Like as a fire. Hallelujah. Glory! Glory! Hallelujah. It's not. Hallelujah! 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 It's not my word. That's the name of God. Yeah. God word. And break up your stony heart. Hallelujah. Break up your kind of mind. Hallelujah. Break up your lust. Hallelujah. Break up your furniture. Break up your dust. Oh, hey. Break up your pride. Oh, hey. Break up baby. Glory to God. What did he say? It's not my word. It's not. Yeah. It's not my word. My word. Like as a fire. Oh, sorry, sorry. It's not my word. Like as a fire. Like fire. Say it to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Like fire. And like a hammer. Like a hammer. That breaketh the Do you understand? Like a hammer. Hallelujah. The church got to break up its folly ground. Hallelujah. Do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do it. Hallelujah. Where God says it. Hallelujah. You understand? It's not my word. What do you say, sir? It's not my word. Oh, this is so beautiful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not hallelujah. My word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's not my word. My word. Like as a fire. Like a fire. Fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's like a fire. Fire. What else is it like? And like a hammer. Like a hammer. God preaches. Go ahead, brother. Don't use feathers. Go ahead, brother. They use hammers. Hammer. What is it for? And like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Break it. Break it. We need something strong. Go ahead. Sound. Break up the unrighteousness that is in us. Don't we do so? Hallelujah. Finish up with Joshua. So, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody all right? Amen. Hallelujah. What is that? Back in Joshua chapter, Joshua 24, chapter 24. And verse 14. The word. Hallelujah. Don't let no one choke it out of you. Hallelujah. If it get in you. Hallelujah. Let it stay there. Hallelujah. No money. No prosperity. No man. No woman. No job. Don't let none of that. Hallelujah. Make you reject God. Hallelujah. I don't care how weak you are. Hallelujah. You may be weak. Yes. But let the weak say I'm strong. Yes. Huh? Glory to God. It's all right. Hallelujah. What did he say, son? Now therefore fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. You gotta watch it. Hallelujah. If you fear God, Hallelujah. take a cigarette out your mouth. You better looking at me now, laying next to your boyfriend. You know that ain't your husband. Get up. Ask him, am I talking to you? Get up. Yes, you. Put your clothes on. 
go home. And if he's at your apartment, throw him out. Because God's word is a hammer. And it's going to come between you and him. And they're going to destroy your entire bedroom. Go ahead. What did he say? Now, therefore, fear the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This was the Holy Ghost brought here today. Wonderful. Fear the Lord and serve him. Serve him. In sincerity. And what? In sincerity. And sincerity. And in truth. And how? In truth. Wait a minute. Serve him. In sincerity. Be sincere. And in truth. Be sincere and what else? And in truth. We have that. Hallelujah. We can do it the way God wants it. We can do it the way God wants it. Sincerity and truth. Truth. Feel us? If you want this truth, Hallelujah. repent. 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 That's it. Repent. Repent. So we'll take God and be baptized. That's right. Every one of you, hallelujah. hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For the remission of your sins. Hallelujah. Let the Lord fill you with the Holy Ghost speaking of the tongue. Hallelujah. Let's get all of that verse. Now therefore, now therefore, fear the Lord. All right, church. Hallelujah. Fear him. Fear, fear the Lord. Believe it or not, fearing him is the conclusion of all things. That's it. it is written, let us say the conclusion of the whole matter. Whole matter. Fear God. Fear God. And that what he said? That's right. And keep his commandments. For this is the whole or the, the complete duty of man. Hallelujah. We're obligated. Hallelujah. Without question, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Lord. I said we're obligated. Yeah? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Whether you're black, white, brown, yellow, or red, holiness is the message of God for all nations. It's for all nations under the sun. Hallelujah. What he said? Now therefore fear the Lord. Now therefore fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. And serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served. Wait. Put away what man set up. That's right. Go after God. That's right. And come out of your man-made religions. Amen. That's what your father said. Sir. Stuff that been set up by the flesh to appease the flesh and move on you or deal with you or encourage you to go against God's everlasting word. That's right. Uh -huh. And put away the gods which your father served and on the other side of the flood. Yes. And in Egypt. Wait a minute. They did it when? On the other side of the flood. Let me open that up. Amen. There's two sides of the flood. That's right. That's right. The other side of the flood was dirty. But when the flood subsided, the whole earth was clean. That's right. For the flood did two things. It saved and destroyed. That's right. It destroyed all of them that didn't want to obey Noah. That's right. But it saved them that got in the ark. And the flood raised the ark. That's right. Are you listening? And put away the gods. Put away the gods. Which your father served on the other side all right, of viewers. the flood. All right, viewers. Your father served Baptist. That's right. Your father served Methodist and Presbyterian and Lutheran and Catholic, Christian scientists, Scientology, Pentecostal, Apostolic. That's Your right. father served all that. That's right. Five percenters. Amen. Your father served all that Mormons. Put away. That's the stuff your father served. Right. And God said, put away the gods <laughs> which your father served. Put away your worship. Which your father served. That your father served. On the other side of the flood. Of the other side of the flood. Because during that time, they wouldn't listen to the message. That's so right. on the other side of the flood, they was married and given in marriage. Hard-haired, stubborn, wouldn't pay no other preacher no mind. 
wouldn't listen to Noah, wouldn't listen to Methuselah. That's right. That's on the other side of the flood. The other side of the flood. Glory to God, but when the flood came, it cleansed the earth. That's right. Eh? And put when the away flood came, when the flood came, it cleansed the earth. That's right. That's right. Glory to God, when uh, Jesus was pierced in his side and blood and water came out, it came out because it was designed to cleanse the earth. Do you get what I'm telling you? Go ahead. What is it? And put, uh, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood. Be quick. And in Egypt. And in Egypt. And serve ye the Lord. Amen. Amen. Who should the world serve? Serve ye the Lord. Who should the world serve? Serve the Lord. Ephesians 4, 5. One Lord. Then Acts 9, 5. Uh, uh, it says, serve the Lord. I want to tell you how many lords it is. Mm -hmm. Then I want you to tell you the Lord's name. In Ephesians that chapter way, when four, you do serve five. him, you know who you're serving. That's right. And you know how many you're serving. That's right. All right. In Ephesians chapter 4 and at verse 5. What is it? One Lord. Glory to God. <laughs> who shall we serve? Serve ye the Lord. How many of them? One Lord. One? One Lord. Let's One. find out his name. Acts I want to alternate all three. Right. All right. Acts chapter 9 and at verse 5. What? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, And the Lord said, I am Jesus. And the Bible said, How many lords it is? One Lord. And the Bible said, Who shall we serve? Serve ye the Lord. And the scripture said, Who is the Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many laws did the scripture say? One Lord. Who did the scripture say we should serve? Serve you the Lord. And who did the Lord say he was? And the Lord said I am Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't care where you move. That's right. Word of God have you boxed in. That's right. Sinner, it doesn't matter you have your position, how rich, how poor, how beautiful you believe you are. Mm -hmm. One thing that you rich folk and poor folk got in common is a place called the grave. Rich man, you can get buried in a solid, pure gold casket. But not even your casket can keep the worms out. That's right. Hey, you in a solid gold casket? Lined with silk, diamond rhinestones, all engraved in it. Here's a poor man. Ain't got nothing but a raggedy old sheet wrapped around his body and dropped in the hole. One thing about both of you, you can't keep the worms out. Scripture says it this way. How do the wise man die? He died. As the fool. As the fool. So to my wealthy millionaire heathens, <laughs> you got a God to obey. You can jump around and party and do anything you want, but I'm telling you right now, right. you're going to stand before God. That's right. You're going to stand before God. Right. You're going to stand before God. Right. The Bible said, I saw the small and great stand before God. That's right. And that's something that no human under the sun will ever avoid or get around. Right. Repent of your sins, stiff neck. Repent of your sins, Miss Cutie. That's right. Repent of your sins, drug dealer. Yes. Yes. Repent of your sins, you that walk around with your pants sagging like you went to the bathroom for a month. Uh -huh. <laughs> repent of your sins, First Lady. That's right. Bishop, repent of your sins. Bishop. Junior Bishop, yes. repent of your sins. Glory to God and be baptized. Baptize. Who? Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's right. In order to get your sins washed away. And then wait until the Lord God of heaven and earth that gave you life fill you with the Holy Ghost. Speaking in other tongue that the Spirit of God give out. If you don't want to go to hell and burn forever, you will take heed to this warning. Right. I don't care if you don't like me. Get over it. I'm warning you. Right. Not liking me is still not going to slow your journey down to the grave. Amen. You're still going to get there. Yes. 
And once you get there, your ignorant, foolish, hell-bound street friends can stand over you and dump a couple of bags of cocaine and yes. drop some Jack Daniels over your grave, you're still going to be dropped in hell. Amen. It won't be no rip for you. No. It won't be no RIP for you. Okay. It won't be no rest in peace for you. Oh, no. Now, if there's anybody here that's wise and understand that they're nothing but dust and understand you only have the breath in your nostrils and you want to get right with God and you want God to be in your life and you want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. If you want it, stand on your feet. Glory to God. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah to God. You that are standing, you see them that are standing all the way in the back? You that are standing, them that are standing all the way in the back, go right where they are. Glory to God. Once you repent of your sins and go down in the water in the name of Jesus Christ, don't step foot back in a false religion or a false church while you live. You see, when you baptize, you don't need to get baptized. They're going to run back to a fake religion. Glory to God, when you repent of your sins and are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of that fake religion and stay out and walk with the way of holiness. Amen. When you do that, say, God of peace be with you. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One Lord, one faith, one. Tell it everywhere. Thank God that one. All right. May God bless you. Thank God that one Lord. Yes, that one Lord. Thank God that one Lord. Tell it everywhere. Thank God that one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, that's one Lord. 